another concept which is what is called as a, a depletion stabilization. <coughs> okay. Now, when I say that, so we mentioned that for the depletion attraction to occur, okay, the polymers have to move out of the gap. Okay. Now, the polymer depleted regions, okay, they are generally created by demixing of the polymer chains in the solvent. Okay, do you understand the statement? So, when I said that the polymer will go to the gap, okay, I can think about that as a demixing, right. Initially, the solvent and the polymer everything was in a mixed state, there was a homogeneous solution. And now, the fact that in the previous case, you know the the particle, so the polymer left the gap, okay, you have a region of pure fluid and a region of polymer plus fluid. Okay. You can think about this as a demixing process. Okay. So, therefore, the polymer depleted regions are generally created by demixing of polymer chains and the solvent. Okay. However, if the solvent, okay, however, if the solvent medium is such that it is a good solvent for the polymer, that means if there is a, a favorable interaction between the solvent and the polymer, this demixing process becomes unfavorable. That means, it will be very hard or it will be very difficult to or it will be practically impossible to move this particle out of the gap. Okay. That means, so the, the region between the particles will continue to have polymer. So, because the demixing is what should happen, only then the particles can, can come sufficiently close, right. But however, if somehow this demixing is prevented, okay, then what will happen is you will always have the region between the two particles will always be having particles sorry polymer plus the fluid. Okay. And such a case is referred to as what is called a depletion stabilization. So, depletion stabilization is a case where the formation of depletion zone is not favored. Okay. Um, yeah, so that is a, yeah, you have some question? So, if you increase the concentration of these particles, then would it change? Would no. So, uh, I think, it, it, look, as it is mentioned here, right, it, it really depends on the polymer solvent combination that you are using. Okay, whether depletion stabilization will occur or not, it will depend on the, the polymer solvent combination, right. Because, because I said that you know if you have a case where the polymer molecules are happy to be in a solvent, okay, that is a, a good solvent case, right. Now, if you have a good solvent, okay, to, so uh, one way of thinking about, um, you know, this uh, like let us go back to this cartoon, right. Okay. So, if you look at this depletion zone formation, right. So, you, you can other way of saying this be that look I have I am able to create regions of no polymer and regions with polymer, right. So, now there are cases where such you know things are not favored. Um, so, one of the case in which this does not happen is uh, a polymer good solvent combination. Okay. So, that is uh, okay, what is the, the reason for uh, this depletion stabilization. Okay. I think this, this does not depend on the, the particle concentration, it depends solely on the, the particle solvent sorry polymer you know, solvent combination that you use. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. 
So, okay, let me put another thing, okay, I, I, I want to make this clear. When I say that, okay, when you, okay, mm. let's this cartoon, right? So, I'm, uh, when I was explaining, I said that, okay, uh, um, you know, there's a depletion volume, you know, and it, it uh, the, you know, it kind of, uh, the depletion volume increases, is what I mentioned, right? So, what brings the particle together or what, you know, so of course, these depletion interactions will kick in only when the particles are sufficiently close, right? Now, what brings them together to such distances? Again, Brownian motion, okay? You are not, you are not externally doing anything, okay? You have uh, particles in a fluid, they are jiggling around, okay? And they, because they are free to move, because they have thermal energy, okay? They are free to move and if it so happens that uh, because of this, you know, chaotic motion that they are exhibiting, if the distance between the particles, you know, could reduce, right? Depends. It depends on the particle concentration, okay? It depends on the diffusivity of the particles, you know, all of that, right? Now, if you, if there is a case where the, the separation distance becomes smaller than this, you know, 2 times Rg or 2 times delta, okay, is when uh, all these depletion effects will uh, kick in, okay? <coughs> Yeah. Any question with uh, uh, so you looked at uh, 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 depletion flocculation, okay, and we also looked at uh, depletion stabilization, okay. So far, right? Any questions with with these two concepts? Yeah. So in one case, uh, so again, this another case. You know, um, again to re you know iterate what I have said. So, this is a case where the ad addition of polymer leads to destabilization this is again a case where the addition of polymer does lead to the stabilization. Okay. Again it depends on the, the polymer plus particle plus solvent combination that we are trying to use. Right? <coughs> okay. <coughs> we can think about can come up with a simple way of deriving an expression for uh, depletion potential. Okay, we will take a very simple case <coughs> and uh, this particular geometry is chosen because again it is very easy to do calculation. Okay. So, the objective is to calculate the uh, depletion potential between two plates which are separated by a distance h okay. and that is uh, plate 1 and that is plate 2. Okay. And you have, so these dotted lines that you see, you can imagine them to be, you know, uh, polymer molecules. So they, they, you know, it says, it, it, they say it's penetrable hard spheres, but you can think of them them to be, you know, polymer molecules. Okay, the the, the size of these molecules is sigma. Okay, and h is the the separation distance. And okay, so this k is the force between the the two particles okay the, and and k is actually the force per unit area between the two parallel plates which are separated by distance h okay that is the difference between the osmotic pressure inside and the osmotic pressure outside okay this is when the when the plates are sufficiently far apart, okay, when the plates are sufficiently par, far apart, this P i would be equal to P, P o and essentially your k of h is going to be 0. That means, there is no force that is either pushing the, you know, them towards each other, right. So, if, if the, so <coughs> let us look at three cases, right. Case 1, where P 0 is equal to P i. Okay, in this case, you know, there is essentially no force between the two because, you know, on an average, the number of molecules of polymer on either side is the same. Therefore, your, you know, the osmotic pressure outside and the osmotic pressure are the same. Okay, and the case two could be where P O is greater than P I. 
that means osmotic pressure outside is larger than P i in such a case the plates are going to be you know pull they, they are going to be pushed towards each other okay. and the third case could be where you know your P o is less than P i okay. in such a case the polymer concentration higher is you know in the, in the center is going to be higher than the exterior region that is when the, the particle will be pushed apart right these are the only three situations that can happen right. <coughs> Now, if you have case like this, uh, if you go back to what we wrote up earlier, the depletion potential as a function of h is going to be is 0 if h is greater than or equal to sigma right that is what we wrote up earlier when the distance of separation between the plates is greater than sigma okay, we had used 2 times delta there okay. So, just a change of change of symbols okay. 2 times in this case 2 times delta is same as sigma ok. So, any distance greater than the diameter of the particles or diameter of the polymers or diameter of these dotted objects is greater distance is greater than that your k f h is going to be 0 and for any distance less than sigma is going to be minus n b into k b t right that is what we would like to prove right. Now, that is the expression for the force ok. So, essentially the force and the potential are related in this particular way right and so if you look up this. So, what is written here essentially comes from this expression right you guys uh, I do not know if you guys um, Let me just do it again. What is written here actually comes from this expression, right? Because for any distance h greater than or equal to sigma, okay, for any distance greater than or equal to sigma, your p i is equal to p o, right? Therefore, your h is going to be zero, right? for any distance which is between h and sigma essentially p i is going to be 0. Therefore, k f h is going to be minus p o okay, and minus p o, p o is the osmotic pressure which ex essentially is n b times k b t right that is how the osmotic pressure was defined because it is force per unit area ok. Therefore, it is I have only written up um, uh, n b into k b t right For, uh, this is this will also have units of force per unit area right. <coughs> so, this will have uh, n b will have number per volume right meter cube uh, k b t will have units of energy that is Newton meter as it gets cancelled. So, it is ok. So, therefore, this consistent right. So, we know how to write this up ok. Now, <coughs> and when you want to look at h ok, when you want to get w all I have to do is I know what is you know the dependence of k with h you know I will just integrate that and I would get an expression for uh, interaction potential. That okay. So, therefore, I need to take this minus n b uh, k t okay, and um, that is going to be uh, k f h. Okay. So, therefore, if you want uh, um, it is the integral from 0 to infinity um, times d h right. If you want w, okay, w is going to be integral of n b times k b t into d h going from in this case your <coughs> you should go from 0 to infinity right. I can split it this integral from 0 to sigma right or any distance of separation h to sigma h could be 0 as well plus going from sigma to infinity right. The contribution sigma to 0 infinity is going to be 0 because 
we know that any distance greater than sigma you know the you know the the interaction is not there so therefore this is going to be zero so when you you know work this out minus nb uh, kbt okay um, dh you'll get essentially this okay so you had nb kt minus right is going to be sigma minus h okay, that is what you it is a simple integral right. <coughs> now, <coughs> if you look at this term right I have w of h I said this is the energy per unit area right interaction energy per unit area. If I take h to the other side I can write this as minus n b k t into sigma minus h multiplied by a right this area multiplied by the separation distance is essentially the depletion volume therefore w of h therefore <coughs> the w of h becomes oops, therefore w of h becomes um, <coughs> this is p there is a osmotic pressure force right osmotic pressure force multiplied by overlap volume okay sigma mi mi minus h multiplied by a is the overlap volume right that will that is essentially is the, the area of the plate multiplied by the the distance between the plates that essentially is the the volume right and depending upon h my overlap volume is going to change so essentially we recover an expression like this right for any distance greater than you know 2 delta or sigma your w depletion is 0 and for any distance between 0 and you know uh, 2 times delta uh, uh, you have uh, depletion interaction going as the osmotic pressure force multiplied by osmotic pressure multiplied by the overlap volume okay that's the so this is a simple derivation to think about how um, you know the expression for depletion interaction is uh, calculated okay so maybe we'll stop here um, <coughs> we'll talk a little bit about uh, how do people do when you have two spherical particles and in a medium how do people think about uh, obtaining an expression for um, um, depletion force is what we'll do in the next class